Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, you will learn about what are the methods available in JavaScript Promise, why you need them, and how to use them. I will also create a polyfill for all the methods. This is just for learning purposes. We don't need to create a polyfill, we can use the Promise method directly. Before we start, I'll recommend you to watch my previous video on JavaScript Promise. You can find the link in the description below. Methods that we will cover in this video are static methods of Promise. Let's understand what is static and instance method. Static methods are methods that exist on the class itself instead of on an individual instance of the class. We can use these methods directly without creating an instance of the class. To create a static function, you must use the static keyword. Instance methods, on the other hand, are those that are available on the instance of the class. We can use these methods only after creating an instance of the class. Let's take an example to understand static and instance methods. I have created a class MyPromise inside the class I have added two methods, one is static and another is an instance method. Then, I created an instance of the class MyPromise using a new keyword and called the then method on the instance of the class. If we try to use all method on the instance of the class, we will get an error. This is because all method is not available in the instance of the class. If we try to use the then method from the class directly, we will get an error because the then method can only be used from the instance of the class. You can also create static methods using the class name.methodName and for instance methods, you can use the class name.prototype.methodName. Now you have a basic understanding of static methods. Let's understand what are the methods available in JavaScript Promise. First, in the list, we have promise.resolve. This method is used to create a resolved promise. It takes a single argument which is the value of the resolved promise. If the argument is a promise, it will return the same promise. This method is useful when we want to convert a value into a promise. Let's take an example of promise.resolve. I've created a new promise using resolve, I'm passing hello as the argument. It's returning an object with the value hello. We can use then to get the value of the promise object. You might be wondering why we need to convert a value into a promise. Why can't we directly use the value in our code? Let's take another example. We have a get user function that takes an ID as an argument and returns a promise, but what if we don't have an ID we can skip the API call and return a resolved promise with a default value. This way we can keep the return value consistent. If we don't use promise.resolve and don't pass an ID, we will get an error.then is not a function because we are not returning anything. Next in the list, we have promise.reject. It is similar to promise.resolve and is used to create a rejected promise. It takes a single argument which is the value of the rejected promise. If the argument is a promise, it will return the same promise. I'll not go into the details it is similar to promise.resolve. Next in the list, we have promise.all. It is used to run multiple promises in parallel. It takes an array of promises as an argument and returns a promise which resolves when all the promises in the array are resolved. If any of the promises in the array is rejected, it will reject the promise. Let's take an example we have a function that takes an array of IDs as an argument and returns an array of promises. We can use this method to run all the promises in parallel and get the result as a single promise. 
This way we can reduce the time taken to run all the promises. I have created a wait function that takes time and is reject an argument and returns a promise which resolves after the given time. I have also created an array of promises which will get resolved after 1 second, 2 seconds, and 3 seconds. Then I'm passing this array of promises to the promise.all method. It returns a promise which resolves after 3 seconds. Because it waits for the longest promise to resolve and then resolves the promise with an array of values of all the promises. Let's see how we can implement promise.all method. First, let's create an all function. It takes an array of promises as an argument and returns a new promise. I have also created a result array and count variables. We will store resolved values of the promises in the result array, and the count variable will keep track of the number of promises resolved. Next, we will iterate over the array of promises and call the then method on each promise. Inside the then method, we will increment the count variable and store the resolved value in the result array. If the count variable is equal to the length of the array of promises, we will resolve the promise with the result array. If any of the promises is rejected, we will reject the promise. Next in the list, we have promise.race. It is used to run multiple promises in parallel. It takes an array of promises as an argument and returns a promise which then fulfills or rejects as soon as one of the promises in the array fulfills or rejects with the value or reason from that promise. Let's take the example of the promise.race. I'll pass an array of promises to the promise.race method and returns a promise which resolves after one second. Because it waits for the first promise to get resolved and then resolves the promise. But if the first promise is rejected, it will return a rejected promise. Let's understand the implementation of race. It almost similar to promise.all, the only difference is that we are not using the count variable to check if all the promises are resolved. We are resolving the promise as soon as any of the promises is resolved. If any of the promises is rejected, we are rejecting the promise. Next in the list, we have promise.all settled. It is used to run multiple promises in parallel. It takes an array of promises as an argument and returns a promise which resolves when all the promises in the array are fulfilled or rejected. It returns an array of objects with the status and value of each promise. If we run the code, we will get an array of objects with the status and value of each promise. Let's say you are making multiple API calls and you want to know which API call is successful and which one is failed. You can use this method to get the status of each promise then you can filter the result array to get the rejected API calls and retry the rejected API calls. Let's understand the implementation of all settled. It is similar to promise.all, the only difference is that we are not rejecting the promise if any of the promises is rejected. We will resolve the promise when all the promises are settled either resolved or rejected. When a promise is rejected or resolved, we will store the status and value of the promise in the result array and increment the count variable. If the count variable is equal to the length of the array of promises, we will resolve the promise with the result array. Last, in the list, we have the promise.any. It is used to run multiple promises in parallel. It takes an array of promises as an argument and returns a promise which resolves when any of the promises in the array is resolved. If all the promises in the array are rejected, it will return a rejected promise. If we run the code, we will get the value of the first resolved promise. But in this case, it behaves like the promise.race. Let me add another example to show the difference. Now if we run the code, 
we will get the value of the second promise. Because the first promise is rejected and the second promise is resolved. Let's understand the implementation of promise.any. We will iterate over the array of promises and call the then method on each promise. If any of the promises is resolved, we will resolve the promise. If any of the promises is rejected, we will increment the count variable. If the count variable is equal to the length of the array of promises, we will reject the promise. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section. I'll see you in the next video.